1749, the scientist visionary, Emanuel Swedenborg, wrote, There is nothing in the world of nature that does not portray something in the world of spirit. The world we live in is the world that we perceive. To sharpen sight is to enrich our world, to raise the level of our inward and outward lives. Our senses show us shadows of our inner substance, reflections of the universe within our minds. The deeper workings of the human spirit are alive, organic, and have for ages been expressed in the fluid forms of myth, art, and music. Lately, we have tried to fit everything, even the human spirit, into mechanistic molds, with only dim reflections of all that our intuition sees as truly human. The world of nature offers us a mirror. Its surface shows reflections of our many moods. Tranquil. Quiet. Playful. Somber. Violent. Sad and raptured in so many shades, never twice the same. Beneath the surface lies the living trove of memory, not static facts in some gray metal filing case but moving images of past experience, some clear, some dimly seen. From time to time, a vivid flash, and something leaps unbidden into consciousness. More often, we must search for what we would recall. Some single purpose lifts aloft, surveys what lies below, alert to seize on what we want. At our most acute, our thought is swift, precise. At other times, there is ungainliness. Sometimes a frantically narrow focus. Sometimes it is more leisurely and deeper. Sometimes marvelously patient.
And then at times we fidget on the fringe of things and occupy ourselves with trivia. Each mode fulfills its special use. Each adds to that diversity, that richness, that is human life and growth. Our minds are not machines, but shifting webs of life. Spiritual ecologies, obedient to spiritual law. In birds, we see the fleeting thoughts of daily consciousness, the quick events that catch at our attention by their motion. But there are longer processes of mind, a growth of knowing over months and years. How do they come to be, these monarch structures of the mind? by processes too slow to see, unless we shift the mode of our perception, some fundamental pattern in its simplest form, at first accepted, then assumed, then fading from our conscious thought. These are living patterns which resolve the richness of the mind to elementals, structure what is dim and formless into growing, rhythmic forms of life. There is a downward growth we do not see, a subtle, potent reaching to subconscious depths, a flow of sustenance from hidden springs of life. There is, too, an upward, outward growth, a reaching out and drawing upon realms of light and air, a central principle and all that it entails. So many branches. Our minds are intersections, then, where elemental life from deep within encounters the effects of sight and sound. Here we meet the world around, and here come moments of discovery. The beauty of an infant thought, a fresh and brilliant touch of comprehension, like the opening of some new sense. A mind rejoices. A tree is full of angels. It is alive, awake. There is a vision. But visions fade, for we cannot sustain enthusiasm so intense. There is a sense of loss, a deep regret. The goodness of the past ought not to be forgotten. So often that it seems to be the rule, the first steps toward the vision are the hardest, small, bitter, unattractive. We wonder whether they have any kinship with their inspiration. But constancy and time work miracles. There is no hardness to the deed matured. The issue is a sweet, substantial goodness, holding seeds of further growth, a knowing born of life.
process does not stop. We sense our need of rest. We tire and slip into a retrospective cast of mind. The warmth of active love declines into the temperance of meditation. And even this departs. The joy of deeds, the joy of contemplation fade away. The flow is stilled. We face the bare, unyielding fact. Our minds turn cold and clear and analytic. We see the shapes, the underlying structures that support the rich variety of life. But life is not departed, only dormant. The static vision yields. The structures subtly soften. delicate and lovely. Yet these are tendrils of an underlying power. We are akin to all that is. And like our parent Earth, we have our ceaseless rhythms. Could we but see ourselves, then we would know how necessarily this ebb and flow reflects our inclination toward our source of life. This source, this center of our being, in itself remote, but in its workings, intimate. Its light is in our eyes, its warmth in our very flesh. We are akin to all that is. When we look out, we need not look at things, at foreign objects to be managed. It is a world translucent. Looking out and seeing through, we see within and find ourselves and find ourselves at home. 